In November, my midlife crisis takes an ill-fated leap of faith that crashes shoulder first into reality, endangering my livelihood and everything our family has worked for. I am now faced with a seemingly impossible dilemma, bear the weight of the busiest violin performance season I've had in years, all on my freshly wounded shoulder, or hang it all up and go back to the assembly line where I belong. When I was in India, one of my most long-standing nightmares came true, showing up to a violin performance out of practice, ill-equipped, and out of sorts. It was one of the most embarrassing experiences of my life. Since then, I've forced myself to grind through performances that left me feeling every bit the same amount of self-loathing and disappointment. But in every case, I was shocked to discover that people still enjoyed some aspect of a performance that I deemed an utter failure. It made me realize that maybe live music doesn't have to be as uptight as I had made it out to be. And I really do have to thank the pan fiddlers here too, because I realized that at the end of the day, people love hearing melodies, especially as played by the violin. For many people in the middle of all the noise of a busy life, the sound of a violin, even faked or imperfect, is better than none. This has been hard for me to accept, but I was making progress doing so. While Mel and Satya were gone to Supergirl Surf Pro, I began making recordings with video of sample pieces in my wedding music repertoire and continued performing for retirees and my first violin teacher, Arlene, at Seagrass Village. The Devil Went Down to Georgia is still in an imperfect state, but I'm getting closer on those tongue twisters. Things were looking up. Anthony released his single, Every Weight, which featured my violin, link below. On November 18th, me and Anthony and John were scheduled to play Los Santijitos, but it was canceled due to cold. On a whim, I asked Anthony if he would mind if I tried to play a solo inside since they wouldn't have any other music scheduled. And with his approval and Los Santijitos taking a chance on me, I booked my first solo gig at a local restaurant. I was exceedingly nervous because even with all my recent prep, I didn't know if I had enough material for a solo three hour set, but it went quite well. Although my stiff demeanor and inability to get out of violin recital mode made my interaction with the crowd minimal and killed the vibe a bit. But Los Santijitos said that due to another cancellation, they could use me the next week on Friday the 25th, so I booked that gig as well. So with the addition of that gig, my next two weeks were slated to be the biggest in my live music career in probably over a decade. And then of course, I didn't listen to Prudence while climbing the ladder one too many times up Clint's ramp when it whispered very clearly, you've done enough, you're not hurt, stop now. I didn't listen when Prudence whispered this time in Tate's voice, but Ajax has to vaunt his vanity and pay the price, and here I am. While I was in the ER, I just kept repeating the mantra that pain, pressure, and panic are good for me, and I need to quit running from them. Well, I'd get my chance in the next few weeks. After the shoulder was properly reduced, the pain did not alleviate much, and I had to cancel my next gig at Seagrass Village, but I could not afford to cancel any more. So I had to improvise using my skating elbow pad, which has these little rivet holes that fit nicely onto my light stand bolt. I was able to prop and lock my elbow on the light stand to practice with minimal pain. This gave me enough confidence to at least try to play the three pieces I was going to need to play at a ritzy wedding on 30A that my old mentor and colleague Fran had booked for me just a week away. So I resolved to try playing through the pain for Fran and see if I could perform at a level that would satisfy her. I told her something was wrong, but I just wanted to show her. I was able to hide the injury and play enough of Pachelbel, Vivaldi, and Handel to satisfy her. We agreed that I would give her updates on my recovery, and if my performance was impeded too much, she would have enough time to get a replacement by the following Thursday. I also had a Christmas quartet booked by Gulf Talent Services for Beachy Beach Realty the following Wednesday. So I did the same thing with Ronnie and Seth, two of the members of the quartet, played the first song without telling them about the problem, and they said if I hadn't said anything, they would not have noticed. We rehearsed just under an hour and I made it through, but on Friday, I had to make it through three hours for Los Antijitos. So that would be the real test. My cousin Jessica and her family were in town for Thanksgiving, and my skate and surf crew came to show support. And with all their encouragement, I was able to grin and bear it and put on a show that seemed to please the crowd. I even got a request for Metallica's Fade to Black from Jessica, and a dude asked for Nine Inch Nails Closer, both of which sort of worked when I gave them a try. So with that successful gig complete, I committed to following through with the four gigs to come in the following week. On Monday, I did a little fest at Tap Room, only 30 minutes. There was a massive improvement over my first little fest there in June of 2021, but Wednesday was the next big hurdle. In this case, I had three other performers, the talent agency, and the client, Beachy Beach, 
who I really could not afford to let down. But this experience was a reminder to me, who oftentimes makes way too much of myself, just how important all the other roles were in making this night special. Not being in tip-top physical shape helped me tone down my ambition for the virtuoso side of performance and embrace that thing which has marred many of the other solo gigs in my past, petulant recital anxiety that kills the vibe. As far as the quartet goes, we all brought something unique to the table. Don provided us with so many of the pieces, Seth helped keep us organized, Ronnie performed the solo set with vocals and cello to give the quartet an intermission. The vibe just felt so much better, not the same kind of frantic anxiety that typifies so much of my violin energy. So the first half of my rite of passage back to being a professional performing violinist was successfully navigated, and I was very thankful but December holds quite a few more obstacles, so the rite of passage remains well stocked with difficulties aplenty, but for the first time in a long while, I feel much more capable of navigating them, and surprisingly, the shoulder has been instrumental in bringing me back down to earth so I can do what I do best without complaint. Until next time, keep practice, production, and performance consistent, even if your muse isn't, and even if the justifications for retreat seem insurmountable. Godspeed, virtuosos. To see these videos early without ads, join the lineup here on YouTube. You just need a YouTube account, and for $1.99 a month, you click this little join button and sign up to get early and ad free access to four monthly vlogs the surf vlog, the masala vlog, the violin vlog, and the family vlog. Thank you very much.